Here's our video about complex fractions. There are two main methods for simplifying complex fractions, and I'm going to focus on the one that I slightly prefer. I think both ways are, are excellent ways. There's one way that I have a slight preference for. So let's start with a couple of numerical examples. Let's go for one-half plus three-fifths over two-thirds minus one-half. Okay, one thing that we know about all fractions is that even if we don't see it, there is implied parentheses around the entire numerator and around the entire denominator. So what I like to do is work numerator and denominator individually. Let's start with the one-half plus three-fifths. We're adding fractions, so we need a common denominator. I'll use 10. So each of these fractions needs to get a little adjustment to build it up to an equivalent fraction that has a denominator of 10. For the 1 half, let's do top and bottom times 5. The 3 fifths, top and bottom times 2. And that's going to give us 5 tenths plus 6 tenths equals 11 tenths. Now let's take the denominator, 2 thirds minus 1 half. Same idea, we need a common denominator, so let's use 6 this time. The 2 thirds needs top and bottom times 2, the 1 half, top and bottom times 3. That's taking us to 4 sixths minus 3 sixths equals 1 sixth. Okay, we simplified the numerator and denominator individually, and here's how we want to finish these complex fractions. So from our numerator, this equaled an 11 tenths. Slide the page up. An 11 tenths was our result from the numerator. And the 1 sixth is the result from the denominator. Now I want you to notice that with this complex fraction, we have in the numerator and denominator just one fraction each. And this means we're ready to finish it up. And the way we finish these fractions up is by knowing that a fraction really is indicating that there's a division. This is really the same as 11 tenths divided by 1 sixth. And if you remember how you like to divide fractions, I remember how I like to. I like to take the second fraction and multiply by the reciprocal. Flip and multiply. So I'm looking at 11 tenths times 6 over 1 instead of this divided by 1 over 6. There's our flip and multiply equals 66 tenths. And we should make sure that uh, this fraction is simplified. And it looks like we can divide numerator and denominator both by 2. And that's going to leave us with our final answer, 33 fifths. So this is the approach that we're going to take. When we start a problem, we're going to look at numerator and denominator and throw parentheses around the entire numerator and around entire denominator and work those as two separate problems. Once we have the numerator and denominator simplified, combined into just one fraction, this is how we'll finish it up. Rewrite it as a divide. Let's flip that second fraction and multiply, and we'll get to our result. This is our next example for complex fractions. Now remember, the way we started off, parentheses around the entire numerator and around the entire denominator. And what we're looking for is, do we have more than one fraction that we need to combine with an add or a subtract. In this case, we don't, not in the numerator and not in the denominator either. What that means is, if you think back to that numerical problem, we're at that point where we're right at the end of the problem and we're ready to write this as a division. This is ready for 2x to the fourth over y squared divided by x squared over y squared. And when we have it set up in this division, we like to flip the second fraction and multiply. So this is now going to be a multiply with y squared over x squared. So we're looking at this multiplication problem and figuring out how do we finish it up. It looks like there's definitely some canceling we can do. And remember, we can cancel when it's a multiplication problem with fractions. So the y squared on the bottom with y squared on the top gone. Right now we're looking at 2x to the fourth 
over x squared, and a little bit more simplifying we can do with x fourth over x two. We've got, if you're looking at this, four x's multiplied together in the numerator and two x's in the denominator. So we'll be able to do some canceling. Two x's from the numerator cancel with two x's from the denominator. And we're left with just two x's up in the numerator. So we're looking at two with x times x, 2x squared. There it is. Not so bad.